Our next speaker uh, is the second part of the IDMP ontology story. Um, Gerd Kleeman from Amgen will talk about implementation experiences in Amgen. So, Gerd, all yours. Yeah, thank you so much, and, and good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, before I get started, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, organizers for giving me the opportunity to present today. And unfortunately, I missed it. I'd like to thank also Heiner for introducing the IDMP ontology uh, and the importance of ontology interoperability. Um, for my presentation, I like to shift the focus towards implementation and discuss what factors need to be considered and what kind of implementation scenarios may be viable options to use the IDMP ontology as a bridge to pharma efficiency. Do you guys hear me okay? I just want to make sure. You're good. Yes, we hear you. Yeah, okay, thank you. So as pharma companies, we are constantly seeking ways to, to optimize our processes um, internally. We want seamless consolidation of data and externally we need efficient exchange with partners, manufacturers, health authorities and healthcare professionals. The IDMP ontology is the first semantic framework that requests that represents the ISO IDMP standards. It provides a common language for describing medicinal products and a digital ecosystem where product safety, efficacy, and supply chain transparency converge, promoting a more efficient and interconnected industry. So by adopting the IDMP ontology, we have the opportunity to simplify complex processes, mitigate errors in identifying our products, and make collaboration data exchange across stakeholders more efficient and timelier. Now that the IDMP ontology is available, our quest is to determine the most appropriate implementation approach. And I'd like to take the opportunity to delve into some of the complexities of IDMP implementation that are hopefully helpful to develop implementation strategies that serve our companies, business use cases, and existing or non-existing data infrastructures. So therefore, let's acknowledge some of the challenges that I and my colleagues at Amgen have come across. The three most important ones are diverse internal data models, regional variations, and the need to align with external standards, for example, uh, UVPQ and fire standards. Considering these complexities will inform a strategy, a strategic path to implementation and IDMP adoption by enhancing efficiencies, promoting semantic inter interoperability, and taking the opportunity to transform our data ecosystems to bridge the gap between people, processes, and systems. So what are the strategic considerations that address these complexities and pave a path to a successful adoption? And I thought of a couple, and I'd like to share with you, that, which i like to share with you here. So the first consideration is to identify the primary goals and objectives. Like for any strategy, an implementation journey needs to begin with a clear vision and to tailor an implementation to meet specific business needs, address use cases, and achieve defined business outcomes. Clarity will drive the implementation approach and ensure the delivery of tangible value. We also need to align with data strategy with existing strategy in our companies. For long-term success, the IDMP ontology implementation strategy must align with existing data principles, data management, and analytics plans. This alignment ensures that the IDMP ontology integrates cohesively into an existing data ecosystem. We all, obviously, we must identify, as I already said, no, I didn't say this, sorry. <laughs> we also have to identify business relevant data domains. So we cannot boil the ocean, and that's important. Therefore, by focusing on data domains that are most pertinent to our business use cases, we ensure that our efforts are concentrated where they will have the greatest impact. We must consider, as Heiner already described, I hope, um, based on the slides I saw, ontology model compatibility. Many 
many companies have existing ontology or data models that must be considered as the foundation upon which to build. Therefore, their compatibility with the IDMP ontology semantics must be assessed and understood to ensure a seamless and interoperable integration. We must achieve data domain understanding and inter interoperability of these data domains. To this end, a thorough understanding of existing data domains and the overlap and extension with IDMP, UVPQ, FHIR, and other external standards will illuminate any gaps allowing bridging the internal data domains with external standards to increase the richness of the data as well as compliance to external regulations and requirements. Other aspects of concern are scalability to make sure the data ecosystem can grow with growing business requirements. And last but not least, data governance and resource implement implications need to be considered to ensure data quality and integrity stay intact and to plan for the right amount of resources required for a sex successful implementation. So I think together these considerations form the basis for a successful implementation strategy. So based on these discussed considerations, what is the most appropriate implementation strategy for you? Well, as always, the answer is it depends. And what is it depending on? You know, one critical factor influencing the implementation of the IDMP ontology is the existing maturity of a company's data ecosystem. For example, when a company already possesses an advanced semantic data fabric, the strategy should prioritize seamless integration of the IDMP ontology into the existing data structures. That effort requires, that effort required for implementation will vary, vary based on how easily alignment can be achieved with the company's existing semantic data models. On the other hand, if a company operates within a less mature ecosystem, it can actually start with a clean slate without any legacy constraints. In that scenario, the IDMP ontology can serve as the fundamental element leveraging the provided data structure based on IDMP principles. The second dependency is the understanding of business use cases. From a business use case perspective, it is critical to understand what the critical business outcomes are and what kind of capabilities are desired. The implementation strategy must be tailored to specific use cases, and as mentioned, taking into, into account the maturity level of the existing data ecosystem. Then, we also must create alignment with the external standard, as I mentioned before, this alignment with external standards plays really a critical, crucial role in determining how the IDMP ontology can be effectively implemented. Again, the approach may differ significantly depending on whether the data ecosystem is mature or less complex. For instance, in a mature data ecosystem, maintaining semantic interoperability between the IDMP ontology, external standards, and the internal semantic data models requires a distinct approach compared to a less mature ecosystem that is inherently less complex, where achieving semantic interoperability is relatively easier. So now, considering the mentioned implement, implement, implementation factors, excuse me, what kind of implementation scenarios are possible, viable options? And uh, we have discussed Internally at Amazon, um, three major options that that we saw uh, a viable option to consider. So option one, uh, summarized on this slide, suggests to not use the IDMP ontology at all, but to revise and refactor existing ontology models by ensuring the data concepts and their relationships are understood and represent a company's internal business domains. For that, all business concepts and interrelationships across the several data domains must be surveyed. And all human readable definitions are reviewed for clarity and precision to ensure they align with the company's understanding of its business concepts and their relationships. The pros of this approach are a faster time to value by building upon existing data models and the avoidance of frequent refactoring as the IDMP ontology evolves. The cons of this approach are 
that it does not justify the cost of a Pistoria Alliance membership as there won't be any return on investment. It misses out on the opportunity to apply an adept IDMP ontology semantics. And most importantly, it may limit semantic interoperability because the lack of semantic richness the IDMP ontology provides. On the opposite end, option two suggests to directly ingest the IDMP ontology into an existing semantic data ecosystem. For that, the semantics must be analyzed to determine whether internal and IDMP ontology data concepts align and map to a company's understanding. The pros of this approach are that the integration of the IDMP ontology produces precision model semantics, that the adoption of the IDMP ontology semantics facilitate IDMP alignment and promotes semantic interoperability. The cons of that approach are that the mapping and aligning of internal ontologies with the IDMP ontology may lead to a slower time to value. Inherently, the IDMP ontology is not a data domain, and therefore the adoption and integration of the IDMP ontology may incur complex challenges because its ingestion requires integration with multiple data domains and data models. Also, as the IDMP ontology is still evolving, each update would require changes to a company's internal data models. So let's uh, look at option three. So with the last option, I'd like to suggest to, to use the semantics of the IDMP ontology to inform a company's existing internal ontology model or models, and to represent the majority of the IDMP ontology in a normalized model within an application repository. For that, the IDMP ontology must be analyzed and the concepts and semantics most relevant to the integration need to be identified. Where alignment exists, the internal concepts, the business concepts, relation definitions can be refactored within the applicable data domains and ontologies to ensure they convey a company's internal understanding. Where there is no alignment, you may not integrate IDMP ontology semantics. The pros of this approach are that a best of both worlds is used by combining IDM IDMP ontology semantics with existing data models, which facilitates alignment with the IDMP ontology and promotes semantic interoperability where appropriate. The cons of this approach are for those semantics that are appropriate to be integrated into the existing data ecosystem, the refactoring across data domains may require significant effort and resources and therefore may lead to a slower time to value. And to stay up to date with new IDMP ontology releases, Repeated refactoring may be required and increasing the life cycle overhead. So to this end, let me summarize the advantages from our perspective and hopefully can um, relate or, you know, um, respect them or <laughs> kind of agree with them for representing the majority of the IDMP ontology model in a normalized model within an application repository as we see it internally at Amgen. So first of all, it creates modularity and flexibility, which I think is very important. By maintaining a separate normalized model within an application repository, we achieve flexibility because changes in the IDMP ontology or external standards won't directly impact our existing ecosystem of data models and data domains. We can update the normalized model independently, which gives us flexibility, adaptability, and minimizing or minimized refactoring of existing data models. It also isolates us from volatility because, as I mentioned, external standards, including the IDMP ontology, evolve. A normalized model acts as a buffer, shielding core data models from these changes. Therefore, we can manage updates to the normalized model more deliberately and therefore minimizing the disruption. It also allows focused use cases. A normalized model, and what I mean with that is that a normalized model can be tailored specifically for IDMP related use cases by capturing the essential semantics needed for compliance with IDMP standards, while the existing data models remain focused on broader business needs. 
It also creates semantic clarity. A normalized model can express IDNP concepts precisely, for example, using OWL2DL or other formalisms, and this clarity aids the understanding and ensures semantic consistency. At the same time, it avoids a growing complexity of existing data models and data domains. It also still promotes interoperability and integration, which is essential. A normal, normalized model serves as a bridge between IDMP-specific semantics and the broader data ecosystem and facilitates integration with other systems, both internal and external, by mapping IDMP concepts to existing data models where relevant. And last but not least, it offers a way for future proving. As external standards evolve, data concepts can be gradually aligned in a normalized model. If the IDMP ontology undergoes significant changes, we can adapt without dis disrupting existing systems. And internal data ecosystems remain robust and future-proof. So in conclusion, a normalized model provides a pragmatic approach. It balances compliance with IDMP standards while safeguarding existing data models against volatility and avoiding the creation of a semantic silo towards a specific use case. By keeping the majority of IDMP semantics separate, we optimize for both specificity and durability. So let me summarize. Um, and I forgot to move, no, I didn't forgot to move the slide, though this is the last slide. So let me summarize. The IDMP ontology, as I said, it's the first semantic framework representing the ISO IDNP standards. It provides a common language for describing medicinal products globally. Implementing the ontology requires consideration of diverse internal data models, regional variations, and alignment with external standards. A successful IDNP ontology implementation strategy involves defining specific objectives, ensuring compatibility with existing data principles, prioritizing relevant data domains, and assessing how existing ontology models align with IDMP ontology semantics. IDMP ontology implementation scenarios, I presented three here, include revising existing ontology models, directly implementing the IDMP ontology or using the IDMP ontology semantics to inform existing ontology models and a normalized model in an app repo. These are obviously not all possible scenarios you can think of. There may be hybrids between them. There's probably some grayscale, but I think for clarity, I hope the three um, give you an idea what options could be available as valuable options. So lastly, a normalized model, as we concluded earlier, within an app repo balances IDMP compliance with safeguarding existing data models against volatility and facilitates semantic interoperability. And with that, I, I thank you for your attention and for giving me the chance to present. Thank you so much.